Hi, Salmon. This is Callie Lady. I had a really hard time picking my favorite predator, mainly because I am a Gemini and I'm very indecisive, but I really did want to share one of my top favorites. And that person is James Rutherford. He like, he doesn't turn any stunts, tricks. He doesn't have like kooky catchphrases or is just like, you know, a wacky character that we all laugh at. But I just get such enjoyment watching him get caught and I love his interviews with Chris Hansen and his interrogation. He is poster child for white privilege. Like you can tell that he was able to get away with a lot as a kid, like one call from daddy and he's off the hook, but not this time. <laughs> and like the other satisfying part, mm, mm, so delicious, is Rutherford literally goes through the like five stages of grief, he, like you see anger, denial, bargaining, depression, and then you get that little bit of acceptance mixed in there. It is a tasty, tasty dish. And that's why he's definitely one of my top favorite predators. Hands down, cut, print, moving on. Thank you, Big Salmon. I really enjoy everything that you do. You are a very awesome fish to have around and in this community. I love everybody in this community. The amount of creativity, openness, acceptance, just really makes a weirdo loner like me feel all the warms and fuzzies. So thank you to everyone and love yous. Hi, buddy, what's up? My name's Anastasia. I was just stopping by on my way to Atlantic City to visit my other brother, Anthony Palumbo. He's my favorite predator. He always knew to put the beer in the refrigerator. And he's not getting anything, just saying. Give good direction, not a driver at night. All in all, he gets a 35, uh, 39, 35, uh, 35, perfect. Thank you. Have a good day. Now, Salmon, you know who our favorite predator is. We had Cool Whip. We got a cat running around. You know, I'm naked. We had the towel. And we had a, a very special night plan. And I think that Marvin would absolutely have to be my favorite predator just because of that. Especially when you brought the cool with and then I had the cat and you were naked and then we were running around and you had the towel and I had to wrap it around you. So, yeah. Marvin, I love you, Sammy. Thank you for all the content. The egg. This is M1A with having severe allergies, brother. So I don't even sound the same right now. But yet again, I'm calm to let you know who still my favorite predator is. Is that jackass, Lauren Lynn Armstrong? What a jack off! I still can't believe they're banging, they're hammering him, catching him, catfishing him, doing the whole nine. I just can't believe they're still doing it. The dude's a loser. But, he's entertaining. So, that's why he's my favorite brother. I'll talk to you later. Have a good one, buddy. Bye. What's up, Mr. Salmon? It's your boy, Streaming Analytics. Uh, I wanted to give you a call and let you know my favorite predator. Hard to pick a favorite predator, but somebody that has a soft spot for me has to be Anthony Palumbo. Because uh, being of Italian-American descent myself, he represents the class of, I guess you'd call them guidos, that uh, the Italian-Americans that are looking to do, do better in life, have a better lot in life, are trying to stray away from. It's funny because upper class, Italian Americans totally look down on people like that. But anyway, um, 
someone like Anthony, I'm sure he has a big family. And the funny thing about people like that is that they definitely rip on each other constantly. And uh, I can only imagine the kind of flack that he got from being broadcasted in a To Catch a Predator episode. So, I mean, they must have torn his ass to pieces for being on that show. And uh, I would have loved to see his interrogation or, you know, or just know what the fallout from that was because, uh, you know, just, just knowing, I mean, we would call them like chooch, you know, these know, knowing these type of chooch guys, you know, from like, I'm from New York. So a lot of uh, family from the Bronx and stuff. I mean, he's completely like a Bronx accent, you know, type chooch guy. And uh, yeah, like I said, it just, it was just funny seeing this type of person get caught in this thing. And, and the whole homosexuality aspect of it must have, I mean, like I said, I can only imagine the, uh, the endless ripping that his uh, extended family and friends must have, uh, must have levied on him. And I'm sure that they, they went through efforts to try to protect him and cover him. But, uh, you know, <laughs> that's something that that type of person would never let him live out. Anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough. Um, Thanks for all the great content, man. Super hilarious, and uh, I'm glad to be part of the Baked Salmon family. So, uh, talk to you later, man. Peace. Hey, Baked Salmon, this is uh, Chernabog Jr. here, and my favorite predator is definitely Kenneth Brinkman. I mean, what's not to love about him? I mean, Jungle Mania 20050, I mean, it's all in the name. Uh, gotta love Dell doing her best young 14-year-old boy impression. Hey, man, come on in. Gotta love that. Yeah, he's from my neck of the woods. Gotta love a local boy. Just everything about that whole sting with Kenneth Brinkman just tickles my funny bones. So thanks for everything you do, Bake Salmon, and I'll continue to be watching your content. Love, TCAP. See ya. Oh, hey, how's it going? Uh, this is CTT. Uh, nothing, I was just uh, calling to uh, talk to a friend that I met on the internet. Uh, Big Salmon, I think. Yes? Well, uh, he's asking about my favorite predator, and I've called him before. I've done, ha, have I done this before? Well... Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I have called in to, to talk about my favorite predator before. Yes, but it's different now. Now it's probably uh, Dan Allen. Um, mostly I love the comments uh, in the, the Dan Allen uh, video on YouTube. Uh, somebody once said he smells, he looks like he smells like ham. Others talking about how he's built like a hamster. Uh, but most of all, uh, people uh, believe in Dan Allen's innocence uh, because he could prove that his car was outside. And I believe him. I believe Dan. And I believe even in death, he can be vindicated. Okay, well, uh, I better uh, get off the phone or I'll, <laughs> I'll shut that phone down your throat. Talk to you later, baby. All right, favorite predator and why? Um, first of all, thanks to Big Salmon for this actual English. Check out my channel, you know. Um, but anyway, my favorite predator. Um, jeez, man. Um, that, that's a tough one, man. You know, I'm gonna have to go like uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with Kenneth Brinkman just because of his interrogation. <laughs> Gentleman <laughs> Gentlemania, uh <laughs> oh boy, what's the stuff? <laughs> Gentlemania, uh jungle mania, um oh boy, uh what how big is it? <laughs> oh man, like definitely jungle mania. This man is a hidden gym. Hey, this is Cat G. 
when you ask us to do this at first, well, I wasn't going to do nothing, but you kind of egged it on a little, and I didn't want to disappoint you. I'm going to be honest. I like Dustin. He's a fellow Southerner, and even though he gives all Southerners a bad name, I need you to know we're not all dumb. Having said that, here's a life tip for you. Do not try to shave down there after washing your hands with KY jelly. If you do, have a first aid kit handy. But yep, I'm going to go cancel my reservation at the Japanese Steakhouse before I get any weaker. But yeah, Dustin's one of my favorites. Well, that was dumb, but it's gonna, I'm just going to leave it. Bye. Hey, Bake. This is uh, Dave from Dave's Lemonade. Um, usually I read off scripts, so I might my thoughts might be all over the place. Um, my favorite predator you asked me earlier in the week, I, would, I was thinking about it long and hard. And I mean, there is so many good ones. It's definitely difficult to, to pick, as I'm sure everyone will be saying. But um, it's got to be Daniel Polito for me. <laughs> I don't really know what it is but whenever I think of Predator I just I just picture his face his goofy face and the way he's just so completely oblivious to the fact that he's in such hot water and gives off that rambling story about how I think it was his cousin like something like this happened to his cousin or someone he knew and so he's it's just it's a perfect storm of ridiculous humor uh brilliant brilliant sort of vocal structures to analyze and you know the way he lies and the way he holds himself it's all around fantastic so yeah Polito would be my favorite I think but there's so many that come in second hey like you know I gotta say Jeff Stacy, JPW, Lawn. they're all pretty up there but yeah the big Polito for me gets it anyway take it easy hope you have a great day and um look forward to speaking soon Hey, this is Corey Edgar, and how does Yahoo let people online who say that they are 102? You have to tell me how Yahoo will let people say that they are 102. Why can't people just be honest? Thank you, Big Corey Edgar, my favorite. Hey, Baked Salmon, this is Doc Dizzle. I just wanted you to know, the best predator is in fact Gerald White. The reason for this is not just his fashion choice of freaking sweatpants with a polo shirt so sloppily tucked into it, but also his communication is the most caveman-like of any of the predators. Uh, I mean, that is just classic. He communicates via grunting. That's all I have to say. Gerald White, or you are wrong. Hey, Baked Salmon. This is the 11th Cafe on YouTube. Uh, I'm calling about my favorite predator. And it is a difficult choice, but I gotta go with Dan Allen. I love his size, uh, how jovial he is, uh, but then turning it to violence with the most absurd threat imaginable of, I'll shove that camera down his throat. Uh, and the strange anecdotes he gives about how he's done this before to explain his actions, but then turning back and saying, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I love everything about him. The fact that he's had a previous stalking charge, but the threat that he was posed to a minor is tremendous, so it's wonderful that now he's caught and uh, he is 
among the handful of predators that have uh, met their maker. Uh, it's just so great to see him uh, fall in this way. Thanks again. Hey, Baked Salmon, uh, Johnny M here. I'm coming from the bridge with this one. Uh, mine might be a bit of a subcategory. Uh, I've got a fascination with Jim Roush. Uh, despite the King of Swing not really having an interview with Chris Hansen, he does give a lengthy and very drunken interview to police and thank thankfully through the web uh, to the greater TCAP community. Uh, Jim is a scumbag, honestly. He had a lengthy chat log with the decoy. Uh, sad Cheyenne was her name. He doesn't really seem to care about the fact that she's sad. Uh, he was naked on the camera, he discussed just terrible stuff. Overall, he was a total pervert. Uh, and on top of that, he drove drunk to this thing house when he went there. Uh, actually, he was too drunk to even make it. Uh, luckily for us, uh, he was on the phone with the decoy for much of that. It's sad, it's fascinating, it's hilarious, it's all sorts of things. It's like an hour long. I recommend that everyone go listen to it, it's, it's really something. Um, once he is arrested, his interview with police is absolutely absurd. He acts as if the police don't even have the chat logs. Um, he acts like they don't have the phone call from an hour prior. Uh, he's visibly drunk. He tries to use uh, the fact that he works at, I think, the University of Cincinnati it is, uh, for uh, criminal justice. He tries to use that in some kind of his favor, but it really does, does not work. Uh, because he's in a terrible situation here and he's just, uh, he's so arrogant, it's unbelievable. Uh, you need to watch it. Uh, I've, I've watched it easily over a dozen times. Um, it's hours long, but it is fascinating. He is full of denial, he's full of arrogance. He, he starts off believing that he's just going to go home and it's not going to be a big deal and it slowly falls apart for him. So yeah, Jim Roush, uh, I recommend everyone watch it. Thanks, Big Salmon. This is Jordan Joestar calling into the Big Salmon Hotline with my favorite predator. I have to cheat a little, if you'll forgive me, and in fact put in my two favorite predators, but they're kind of a package deal. I'm of course talking about our beloved comedy duo, Safraz Khan and Yaz Aspor, or Tennis Boy 213 and Slave to Mistresses. The flash of genius inviting Slave in while Hanson was questioning Tennis Boy brought us so much. Hansen introducing them by the screen names, the yin-yang dynamic of the cautious and wary tennis boy versus the confused and kink-shamed slaves and mistresses. Did you bring your collar? And of course, the flawless timing and we're both gonna be arrested, I think. What? I was never able to say for sure if slave is taller than tennis boy, but he seems to be. Especially if we use the fish on the wall as a rough measuring stick, Slave seems to have at least a couple inches on Pat and this boy. I'd like to think so, as it adds to their comedy duo dynamic. The trope of a smaller, relatively smarter guy paired with his bigger, dopier, and all-around wackier compadre, like Ren and Stimpy, or Pinky and the Brain, or Marvin Harry. Wow, that would make Home Alone a lot darker. But really, I would totally watch a cartoon of those two. Every week, Tennis Boy would hatch some ill-conceived scheme to lure a child. Slave would be the literal butt monkey to rival even more himself, but still get off to it. The duo would be outfoxed each time by Chris and Team PJ. Tennis Boy would hang his head, and Slave's vacant and uncomprehending eyes would stare into the camera. Like a child lost at the supermarket, or like a foreigner whose English comprehension is inversely proportional to how much trouble he's in. Their appearance on the show was lightning in a bottle, criminally underrated, and in my opinion, TCAP at its finest. This has been Jordan Joestar, and thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Bye-bye now. Hey, it's me again, your friendly head of security of the BSN Network, TechRex71, giving one of my favorite predators, 
That would be Xavier01 from the Forts and Georges thing. Not just because he comes in after he sees Chris. I know what it was. I know what this was. I know what it was. But what do you think it was? Nothing. But it introduced me to a Harris County uh, deputy. She was walking behind the, the two guys and <laughs> her approach was just comical to me because she's running way behind the other two guys who's already got Xavier tackled to the ground but as she's running she's waving her gun side to side like bitch I hope your finger is not on the trigger anyway that's my pick thank you and y'all have a nice day Senior Samone, what's up? This is NT. Uh, I want to go ahead and reply here. Uh, I want to be in the big seven video, of course, about that time. Um, who's my favorite? It's got to be my lord. It's got to be Mr. Rouch, James slash Jim. Man, let me tell you why. So, not only does the epic two-hour nonsensical conversation about all the things, the drug use, where he's at, the gimme the sex, I mean, just line after line after classic line. It's amazing. I mean, it's just phenomenal. His physical stature, the fat stomach, his hand on the tummy, him talking about going, how he goes to work out, sometimes at the university, <laughs> he doesn't do that, and it's amazing. That fat walrus mustache, the cross hands over the tummy. Oh, it's all just fucking disgusting and amazing. And I love every second of it, right? So, it's amazing that if you, like me, me personally, I started watching this, this interview, and I was like, man, okay, it, it doesn't really strike home, but I started watching it more and more and more and more and more, right? Well, then you go and you read the chat log, and you realize this guy is just a petunia pisser. That's all he wants to do. It is piss on the petunias. Anyway, one love. One, one love, Simon. One love, man. Bless up, bless up. Be safe out there. Appreciate all that hard work. Man, that's all it is, baby. All love, all love. Peace. Yo, what's up, everybody, the viewers of the Big Salmon Channel. This is your boy, Poop Frog. Cra, 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 Poop Frog. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, hey, what's up, dog? Hey, uh, I still have the same favorite predator, bro. It's still, um, Sir Thomas Coffin, man. Like, uh, it still is. He's super, uh, goofy, and he just makes me laugh, and, uh, I don't know if that's ever gonna change, man, but, uh, that's not as fun. That's not as fun as having like a, a fucking new one. So um, my new one is like who I've been like kind of considering my favorite lately um, is Jerry Wayne Martin Kosis. Um, now Jerry Wayne Martin Kosis, for you guys that do not remember uh, him, is the guy with the weird teeth and he's like, he's talking about he came from way, way, way and this and that and he's all super, super duper weird looking. You guys know what I'm talking about, but that's not the reason. It's because um, his chat log is super gross. Like, he wants this chick to... Well, I'm sorry, this chick. That's super wrong. But this young lady, this young girl, this child, to urinate on him, to go number one on him. And, oh, I'm going to tickle you, and you're going to go number one. And he keeps, like, talking about making her go number one forever. It's crazy. He goes on and on and on about it in the chat log. And uh, the man likes pee. What can I say? He likes he likes uh, he likes pee. So yeah, <laughs> hey, but it's weird and it's un it's unsettling. I think that's kind of the mix of what what everybody likes in to catch predator is kind of like you know like uh, it's interesting. You know, <laughs> it's interesting to see uh, you know uh, what makes these guys tick. You know what what motivates them and. Uh, yeah, I guess ultimately what you could do to prevent it, which, uh, who knows, you <laughs> know? But anyway, I'm all fucking off on one. Uh, oh, my language, my language, excuse me. Um, boom, yeah, hey, God bless. Good.
Hey, Sam, and I'm going to have to go with Michael Patterson because, you know, the bad lieutenant himself. First of all, dude gets fired from being a cop. Do you know how much of a dipshit you have to be to get fired from being a cop? Like, dude, you can shoot a guy in the back like five times and keep your job from being a cop. And this guy just like, oh, somehow he got fired. Then he drives five and a half hours for a 13 year old girl. I won't drive 25 and a half minutes for somebody my own age. And this guy's redlining it to rape a child. But, you know, my favorite part is that, that taser thing at the end. <laughs> just screaming like a little girl. That's just great. But anyway, hey, thanks for everything you do. And I love you, man. Hi, sir. This is Dee Dee. I really wanted to call in and talk about my favorite predator, but fantasies streamed up online or in your mind. Things you might not be able to willingly do when it comes down to it. So, maybe next time. Bye.